Welcome to another wonderful analysis here at uh, Swim Easy Speed. And today we're going to be uh, looking at a marathon swimmer, uh, Andy. And uh, I've been working with Andy for the past year to uh, train up for the swim across the sound. And it's a 15 mile uh, swim from uh, New York to Connecticut. So you go through the Long Island Sound. And uh, you have to do a, if you're going to do it solo, it's a solo or relay event. Um, it's a swim across America event, actually. Um, and you need to do a six hour uh, swim where you can show that you can do 10 miles in six hours. So uh, Andy came to me about a little bit over a year ago and, uh, you know, asked me kind of the best way to train up for it. So we went through and, and you know, just been working towards this goal for the past year. And this is kind of a video of, um, we got him in the endless pool one time before he left. We went, I wanted to get some video of what he looked like and kind of give him some last little few pointers to work on. But he's been showing up the practices regularly uh, with the team. So we've been doing that. But uh, we'll go over kind of, uh, I think initially, kind of how he did. So we'll have some video, uh, some pictures interspersed in here of, of what went on during the race. And then uh, we'll go over his stroke real quick and you'll get to a little peek inside and see how uh, we, we prep for everything. So here we go. Yeah, so this was just, uh, the race was just a couple weekends ago. So here they are at the start. They were, uh, in this particular race, there were five of them. And uh, five solo swimmers. And I think he told me there were 100 uh, relays. So uh, pretty crowded field. I start on the beach and, you know, here he is kind of going through. They had some buoys out. Um, but this kind of gives you an idea, this track right here. We'll back that up a little bit. Um, so that's, he was kind of neck and neck with another swimmer pretty much the whole way. And this track right here gives you an idea of how close they were. And then here's really how close they were. So the other swimmer that he was competing against is right there. Um, and you can see, so Andy is the one right, Andy is right there. So clear that up. Yeah. Andy is right there, um, in the race. And then his competition is right there. So every, uh, every swimmer had to have their own boat and, uh, they had a crew and, um, nutrition on board and, you know, we practiced nutrition and, um, what he was going to need. Cause, uh, we knew the swim was going to be somewhere between, uh, for him probably, uh, six to seven hours. Um, this one got cut short, I think, by about a mile. So he went 14 miles in just under six hours. Um, but uh, at the end, he was neck and neck, and fortunately, um, he was able to pull it off in the last half mile. So he, he told me that uh, uh, he was able to pull away from the, the kid that was swimming with him the whole time um, uh, in the last half mile and, and, and pull out the W. So he was the... He, he, he finished first in the, in the 14, 15 mile swim. So, so now we're going to get into kind of his stroke and, um, um, what we, what we kind of saw or what I saw and what we worked on when he got in. So here he is starting out. So Andy is, comes from a swimming background. Andy, uh, was a sprint freestyler. He swam at West Point and, uh, was a 50 freestyler. And, you know, some of the interesting stuff that you can see, you know, he's, he's holding his head a little bit high. And that was the, the main thing that we worked on in this kind of deal. But, you know, Andy's still got pretty, really good feel for the water. Um, the, I'll show you one thing that um, he, when, you, when you start coaching long enough and you've been around this long enough, um, you start to see kind of how strokes change over time. And what I mean is different eras had different techniques. And sometimes they're, they're subtle differences and sometimes they're fairly significant differences. And so, you know, here's kind of some of the basics though with Andy. You can see, I mean, he's got a really, really straight line down the middle of his body. So, you know, that helps a lot in any of this. Um, and then we'll kind of, so here's the overhead again. You know, he keeps his feet together. Really solid kind of even rotation on both sides of his body. Um, I'll show you the next video is the one you'll get to kind of see a little bit more of what we're talking about um, in terms of the, the different um, freestyle dynamics over the years. So here's one of the things. So if we back up here. Uh, right. 
there. So you can see right there how his hand is entering in thumb down. So um, Andy and I are the same age. So way back when, um, and it was actually a little bit before our generation when of swimmers when that was more prominent, but I'm sure his coach uh, might have been from that era and that's what they got taught. So um, back then, uh, one of the things was if you were a sprint freestyler, it was to try to get as clean of an entry as possible. So that's part of that reason, almost like you're slicing through the water right there. Um, that's part of the reason for that turn right there of the hand. Um, and, you know, you'll be able to see um, he does have really, really clean entries on, on the stroke. So um, actually we can go back. Uh, you'll be able to see in the overhead. Um, there's, there's practically no bubbles at all coming off of his hands. Um, you know, so you can see kind of, and there's a pretty good one right there. So like on that left, it goes in, you know, there's no bubbles on his hand. And then if, um, I want to back it up, we can go underwater. And you can see kind of, you know, it gets a little bit of bubbles on the right, but there's not much there. And then the left really enters clean. Nothing kind of really sticks to your hands. Now, part of, you know, why I'm talking about that is um, it's less probably important for triathletes. But, uh, you know, one of the things is if you can have that really clean entry on your hands where you're, you don't have a lot of bubbles on them, um, you can get a lot better grab on the water, a lot more kind of effective pull on the water, a lot better feel for the water. Um, because then it's just your hand in the water, not like bubbles between your um, hand and it's just a clean, clean kind of water to grab. Um, and then we'll go, uh, the last shot here, it will be of, uh, him underwater. Kind of from the, uh, it'll be on his left side underwater. So you can see, you know, he's, he does a really good job, right? So he enters in. And you see he grabs the water, gets a lot, gets a really good grab on the water, and, you know, goes a little bit past midline there. So if we're thinking midline's maybe there. You know, he's a little bit past midline. Um, you know, we could kind of get those hands pointed, if those fingertips pointed down um, right there, it would probably be kind of an ideal uh, position on his arm. Um, but yeah, goes through. Uh, it just gets a good grab on the water, and he's got a nice kind of rhythmic stroke. So, uh, and he's he's really done a great job of uh, doing everything to to get into shape this past year for the swim. So, what we did to kind of focus on um, that higher head position was there's a, a really good piece of equipment out there called uh, the mortar, and it's made by Fike Swim. They're the ones that make the brick, uh, the weighted kickboard. So, this is a weighted pull buoy. It's uh, a two pound, I think it's a kilo pull buoy, so 2.2 pound pull buoy um, with enough uh, uh, flotation on it where it makes it kind of neutrally buoyant. Well, one of the things that I've found that it, it tends to do really well is if you're someone that carries your head pretty high in the water, um, it'll typically balance that out. So you can see even here with Andy, he's got it on, um, how his head position's kind of gone down as his hips have come up a little bit more. And then you'll be able to see in this kind of final video, um, you know, nothing. So the head is kind of more in line now with the shoulders, more in line with the neck, the spine. And he's just a lot longer and flatter on the water. So, um, yeah, that's kind of what we worked on. And, um, you know, if you guys are interested, I'm more than happy to talk about what we did in a little bit more detail uh, in terms of nutrition, kind of uh, what... Um, what strength and conditioning equipment he did and used and, and the influence that that played in getting him ready for all this. Uh, um, he pretty much peaked, I think, at about a little bit over 30,000 yards at the, the very peak of the training. So we were doing doubles a couple times a week, and, um, but we built, over, we built up to that over a year, and that really didn't last for more than probably four to five weeks, I think, if I'm thinking back on it. So, uh, yeah, that was, uh, that was Andy Swim. But everyone on the team was really excited that he did so well and, 
And, uh, you know, it was a good day for everyone involved. So uh, thank you again for tuning in. Uh, please, if you like this, like, share, comment. Uh, I am always happy to answer questions, and uh, we'll see you. I hope you tune in for the next video. Thanks again.